All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our last review uh, video for our conic sections. Um, both of these are hyperbola with given data. Okay, here I'm given a center, a foci, and a vertex. So uh, this should be pretty simple. All right, so what did I do? I took this information. I plotted my center. I plotted my foci and I plotted my vertex. Okay, remember these guys are symmetrical. So even though they aim, it only gave me one coordinate, they're going to be symmetrical about the center point. Okay, so what does that tell us about this orientation? This orientation tells us that I've got a mistake here. Uh, my orientation tells us that all of these guys lie on the transverse axis. Okay, so for my transverse axis, I can get the um, up and down sides of my imaginary box, my value A. I apologize for this being so crowded. Try to draw an expanded scale. Still crowded. Okay, so I've got my A value, and I've got my C value, but get to get the top and bottom of my imaginary box here, I need my B value. Okay, no problem. Okay, these dimensions have a relationship by Pythagorean, so I back calculate then that B is plus or minus square root of 3, for plotting purposes, that's about one and three quarter. Okay, so that means that the height of this box is root three. Height of this box, I'm sorry, the dimension of this box is root three, and then here is root three. So what that does is that establishes then my conjugate axis, and it allows me to build my imaginary box. Once I build my imaginary box, I can get the asymptotes. What if I need to get the slope of the asymptotes? No problem. Rise, which is my B value. Run, which is my A value. Okay, so that gives me the slope of my asymptotes. Uh, B over A plus minus, because I got this guy got down here too. Uh, equation of the asymptote, a little nasty. I'm going to get to that later. All right, but there's the slope of the asymptote. Okay, are we ready for the um, standard form? Okay, so the standard form, kind of jumped the gun a little bit right here. I know that I have, um, let's do this right. It's a horizontal orientation, so my x squared term is going to be the positive guy, and I'm going to put a squared, and the other one then is going to have the b squared. All right, and do I know what h and k is? Yes, I do. All right, those were given as my center points, so I can then plug those in. So that's going to be x plus 2 squared. Do I know what a squared is? Yes, I do. It's 1 minus y plus 3 squared over my b squared term, which is going to be 3. And there is my um, standard equation. And I'm going to show you how to put that in general form in just a second. But let's get back to this equation of the asymptote. Now, this is ugly. Uh, I just went through it real quick. You're probably not going to have one this ugly on the quiz. But I know the slope. Okay, I'm going to have a positive slope. I'm going to have a slope. This is just y equals mx plus b. Now, here, obviously, these y-intercepts, they're kind of nasty. That one looks like negative 6 and a little bit more than a half. Um, so I'm going to have to figure those y-intercepts out algebraically. 
No problem. One of my points on my asymptote has to, happens to be the center. So let's plug that known point into my uh, y equals mx plus b, solve for b, and b is one ugly spud indeed. It's all of this irrational garbage, which is about negative 6.46, which is about where it is. So that's actually, it's very ugly, but that is y equals mx plus b. I could do the same thing for the negative slope, uh, but um, yeah, I don't want to. Okay, you get the idea. All right, so let's do another type of hyperbola. Okay, this is one of your homework problems. We kind of went over this in class just a little bit. I still have a lot of questions about it. It is a little bit of a challenge because I'm given something a little bit different. I'm given this information. Okay, this guy and this guy, kind of a no-brainer. Okay, let's plot those guys. And once I plot the two foci, then my center comes into view very quickly. Oh, boy, the origin. Okay, now, here I have C, but that does nothing to help me find the dimensions A and B of my imaginary box. Now, I'm going to have to go to this. Why, how, why is that going to help me? Well, I know my slope, rise over run, is going to be B divided by A. If it's going to be positive 1, the only way I can have that is B has to equal A. Anything divided by itself is going to get 1. All right, well, let's go there into our Pythagorean identity and see how that helps us. We do know C, 4 squared, has to be equal to A squared plus B squared. This guy and this guy have to be equal. So if this guy is 16, the only two guys that's, uh, that are equal and add up to 16 are 8 and 8. So A squared has to be 8. B squared has to be 8. That means that A and B are both 2 root 2, which is about mm, slightly over 2 and 3 quarter which allows us to plot. So I come away um, a distance A, 1, 2, and 3 quarter, okay? And that gives me this side of the box. And then I come up 2.8. That gives me my B value, this side of the box, all right? And it's literally, truly a box. It is a square centered around the origin. That sets my asymptotes. Okay, slope of 1. Okay, I'm good to go. Now, where is the vertex? Well, the vertex is going to sit right here and right here. So, my coordinates for my vertexes are going to be the origin um, plus 2 root 2. Y value is 0. It's going to give me this vertex right here. This vertex right here is going to be going the opposite way, negative 2, root 2, 0. Oops, can't see it, sorry. And there's that vertex. Okay, and then my graph, then horizontal orientation is going to come through, hit that vertex, and come through asymptotically like this, and the same way on the other side. Okay, how am I going to set up my general equation? All right, well, it's a horizontal orientation, so that means that my x minus h squared term is positive, and a squared is going to live under the positive term. Minus y minus k squared over b squared equal 1. Okay, I'm centered on the origin, so this guy and this guy are just simply 0. So I'm going to have x squared over a squared. Okay, a squared is 2 times root 2 squared. Oh, I've already done that math. That's 8. y squared over 8 
equal 1. And that's the equation for that. I lied. Let's go back and I said, well, how am I going to get the general equation for this? Well, what's the least common multiple? The least common multiple here is I multiply everything by 3. Okay, so that's going to give me 3x plus 2 squared minus y plus 3 squared equal 3. Then I need to FOIL uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus sign uh, all of this gobbledygook y squared plus 6y plus 9 equal 3. Distribute 3x squared plus 12x plus 12. Distribute the minus sign. y squared minus 6y minus 9 equal 3. Clean this up a little bit. 3x squared minus y squared, uh, where's my other terms, 12x, 6y, positive 12, negative 9 is a positive 3, bring over this guy, equals to 0, and then that's your general form. All right, I think there's like one bonus question where I ask you to put it in general form, but there it is.